that whole um, idea of being regenerative is, is really important. And I think this is where the Thriveability Foundation comes into its own in terms of a real strategic way of thinking about all this and driving it forward. And it may be the place where all of this comes together. We need a new form of governance that's beyond hierarchy. We have a lot of networks today. We have intelligence in the networks. That's the key thing. The intelligence is embodied in the networks and the relationships. We are learning how to measure that, and we're learning how to motivate people to collaborate for win-win-win outcomes. That's going to be the key to the survival of our species. That's it right there. Some of you probably saw this. This is the latest picture of the, the newest satellites that measure everything. We can see the water drying up in the Caspian Sea. And we know we don't want to be there. We want to be thriving. But sustainability after 40 years has given us a 1.6 planet footprint. Is that sustainable? No. no, it's not sustainable. So is it working? Because if you set a one planet footprint and you end up with 1.6, it's not working. So why? Well, one of the biggest reasons is that the way we structured our 20th century organizations was that they were built to last forever and look the same forever, right? And that's great, except when the world around you is changing so fast that you should be totally different. The crisis we're dealing with is like the existential crisis of the history of humanity. Yeah. And we got people running around going, well, what's the business case? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same, it's, it's the same way as, as, as lawyers within an organization say, you know, we cannot save the world, it's too risky. 80-20 is what most business people need. They just need a strategic logic. They don't need to see it. It's like, yeah, well, this is just, it's obvious. Let's just do it, okay? We'll figure it out later. And, and, and so, and sustainability got stuck in this, we have to calculate, and especially Borschmann Group Technique Germans, have to calculate everything exactly to make a decision. That takes way too long. Yeah. And that's the key, I think, um, unless you've got to have it, you, you can't have a separate sustainability budget. There should yeah. be no such thing. We don't, we don't have a separate sustainability budget. We have, we have a business and we have a strategy and business areas and they all do sustainability because that's just the way business is done. When we look at what Crown Estate's doing, they are, if you like, guardians of a place, many places. And that sort of spirit of, of the whole system you can see it in action, it's, it's alive, right? And you can see it changing, it's, it's fantastic. It's a great thing about natural capital especially. But you see people changing and communities, and it's holistic by its very nature. So it's wonderful to see a holistic approach emerging out of that. But would a metal bashing company in Shanghai or somewhere on the outskirts of Shanghai kind of have the same approach? Or those guys slashing and burning the Indian Asian rainforest right now, would they be like inspired you know, it, they, they live in a system too, but they have a different relationship with that system. Let's look at this value system here and redesign for all of these value systems to become healthy. Because there isn't a time in evolution for all of us, the people who are logging the rain, rainforests right now, there isn't time to get them to come to your, your sangha to have a like moment to reconnect with nature. No, they just want to cut the trees down so they can eat. So. Deal with that set of incentives and where they are. The accountants over here, yeah, I'll do it, but it must hit the balance sheet, the income statement. That's fine to, like we said, speak the language. But be a little bit ahead of them, not too far ahead, so you're weird, but just so you're understandable and inspiring to them. We got enough know-how mm -hmm. to go into action and start acting and learn. Tomorrow is a land when you learn in action. Mm -hmm. It's moment by moment by moment yeah. discoveries and changes in the forest. Yeah. It's an avatar jungle. Mm -hmm. And you've got to be multisensory, multisystem, you've got to be all of the same, multi-human, but mostly human. So what we're focusing on in thrivability is the glue. Because there's so much good stuff out there. But the point is, how do you bring it back to thrivability for me, for you, for you, for you? Because if we can't be thrivable, who else is going to be interested in being thrivable or taking our recommendations? We've got to walk the talk, be the role model, and be the transformation. So, but we need metrics, because different stakeholders need to know how things are going, right? 
And they all have very, very different value systems and needs. And right now, the system is totally fragmented. It doesn't cater. There's silos. Yeah? So it's not easy. And let me warn all of us here. It's very hard to cross silos and bridge them. That's the biggest, most work to do. So we have to figure that platform, that blueprints, exchanges, pilots, labs, very carefully to maximize openness and collaboration and innovation and, and success. I think we can do it. I'm, I'm humbled and proud to have sort of been on this journey with all of you, and, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next year. Thank you.